Hey guys, it's Shaylin. I'm here today with another writing video. Today I'm just doing a big publication announcement because I've actually got a ton of publishing related news. I've published four short stories since the beginning of 2020, which is wild. I think we can all agree it's been kind of a crapshoot year. The only thing that's really been good about this year has been my submittable, which has been popping. None of this is like new news or anything. I've shared all of this on like my other social accounts, but I haven't actually really updated this on my YouTube channel. So I thought it would be worth doing like an actual just publication announcement, talk about the stories, where you can read them, give maybe a little bit of fun background on them, and then to make this video a little more interesting, I also got some Q&A questions sent in on my blog, so I'm gonna just answer a couple in between each story. So the first piece that I had published um, was back in February, and it was my short story Barefoot, which was published in The Fiddlehead. So if you want to order this, it's in issue 282, um, which is winter 2020. This story is only available in print. However, it's unfortunately a little bit difficult to get your hands on. The Fiddlehead, who I love dearly, they treat their authors really well. Your girl got paid. They're also Canada's oldest magazine which is very cool. This year's their 75th anniversary, but they have not exactly gone with the times when it comes to online stores. They don't have like an easy online store. If you want to order a copy of this issue, you do have to go to their website and email them. <laughs> I don't really know what the process is from there because I haven't done it myself. Pre-lockdown, you were also able to find copies of this in some Canadian bookstores. I know my mom found it at an Indigo. I found it at a local a local like independent bookstore. So like I said, this piece came out in February. So the story that I have in this magazine is called Barefoot. There she is. This is actually a story that I wrote a really long time ago. I wrote the first draft of Barefoot in August or July of 2017. That's how long I've been working on this story. This story is about um, a 14 year old boy named Sunan who lives in Bangkok. He and his brother attempt to pickpocket a tourist, but it kind of goes wrong and she accidentally gets killed. The idea for this story kind of just like fell into my lap. Basically in, yeah, also in 2017, I was going to Vietnam with my family. We had a day where we all kind of met to like talk about what we wanted to do and figure out our itinerary and everything. During this little get together, um, someone, in our group said, oh, by the way, I've read that you're not supposed to wear a crossbody bag because someone can drive by in a motorbike and grab it. So everyone make sure you bring a backpack as like your secondary luggage item. And my mom goes, oh, but I have a like travel safe bag where the strap can't be cut. And then someone else goes, that's actually worse. Then you just get pulled into traffic and maybe die. And my brain was like, that's a story. I sat with the idea for a little while and I didn't really know how to progress with it. Like, I knew who the characters would be, but I didn't really have a point to access the story. Months later, in like August or July, whenever it was that I wrote this um, story, out of nowhere I had this idea for like a, a way to describe a market that I thought of independently of this story and then kind of realized that that was a, where the story started in, which is actually still the first um, paragraph like that state. So I spent so long working on this story. This is probably in terms of like time per word, time per word, the most time that I've ever put into writing a story and polishing it. I submitted it to a school workshop in September, spent like months revising it after that workshop. I submitted this story for so long. So I started submitting this at the end of 2017 and it was accepted at like the end of 2019. Like two years of submitting the story. I had submitted the story a lot. It had been rejected a lot. I knew it was controversial, but I also did feel like it was probably the best thing I'd ever written. I put so much time into polishing the story and early on in the submission process, I'd gotten an honorable mention from Glimmer Train in one of their contests. And so I kind of felt like, okay, like look at that. That's a, maybe a sign. And then I submitted for a year and everyone was like, oh, you know. So then finally, September of 2019, I decided to submit to the Fiddlehead, who I had actually never submitted to before because they'd always had mail-in submissions and I'm lazy and I never submit my mail. They'd just gotten online submission. And I actually like consciously was thinking as I was submitting the story, this will be the last time I ever submit the story. After this, it will have been like two years and I'm just gonna have to let it rest and just accept that this one's not gonna get published. It got accepted. So moral of the story, don't give up on your dreams. <laughs> one of the coolest parts about this is actually that my roommate has a poem published in the same issue, which the odds of that happening are just so like 
so unlikely. And it was actually kind of interesting how it happened because she had gotten an acceptance in like May of last year and then I'd gotten my acceptance in September. But both of us, when we'd been accepted, we hadn't been told which issue we'd be in. Like one would think that she would be in an issue before me. Who knows, there are a lot of factors that could come into play with what issue you're in. Neither of us had heard anything from them. Like I was truly told nothing. The fiddlehead had said to me like, oh, we'll send you edits when we have them. And then they never sent me edits. And so I read that as I'm not going to be published in this magazine for like a year. I was expecting to be published like late 2020 or even 2021 because I know these things can move slow and they hadn't sent me edits yet. Then in like December, I got an email from the proofreader who had a question about one word. So I guess they like never had edits for me. So they just never sent me edits. And then eventually like one day I came home and both of our checks from the fiddlehead were here. So it was actually so cool and so neat to be in the same issue with someone that I went through like my whole degree with. Um, like we were in the same writing cohort, had been like best buds in this program for years. And so then to end up like right after we both graduated to kind of like end up in the same issue, the odds of that happening are so slim. And I wonder how confused the people at the fiddlehead were when they were mailing out stuff and to the same address. So I'm gonna answer a couple questions. So the first one was, how long did it take to write each story? So Barefoot, the first draft took about three weeks, maybe. I have no idea, guys, this was 2017. I spent like September to December doing like a heavy revision after workshop, and then I kept tinkering with it just like every so often. Funny thing about Barefoot, like I said, I had submitted this in February of last year, so over a year ago and then I'd gotten accepted in September. Because they never gave me edits, I hadn't actually, I never looked at the story again. I haven't read the story all the way through since like before I submitted it. And I was flipping through it the other day. There are so many lines that I do not remember writing. I'm like, how did that get in there? Like, not that I don't like it or that I would change it, but I'm just like, what is, like, I have no memory of so many things that are in this story. The next story, Solarium. First draft of that story took like two days. In terms of time investment, Solarium was the least. I got stuck on the first paragraph for a long time and then I wrote the rest of the draft in like two days. Wishbone took maybe like five days to draft, I think, and years to edit. <laughs> and then Cherry and Jane in the Garden of Eden, I drafted this recently and I don't remember. Maybe like two weeks? A week? I have no idea. I think it was probably only like three or four sittings spread over maybe two weeks. I don't remember. <laughs> So the next question is what was the most challenging aspect of each story and what was the most enjoyable? So for Barefoot, the most challenging aspect was definitely, it was the setting, but also everything that comes along with the setting, like writing a character from a different cultural background than my own, obviously was really, really hard. So the setting, but yeah, what the setting meant for the character. I had to look up basically every single detail in this story, you know, like this wasn't the kind of story where I could just pull it from my own, details from my own brain. I had to stop to Google everything. Um, look up everything. So that was the hardest. The most enjoyable aspect of this story for me is probably the main character. I really love Sunan. He's probably like my favorite character from a short story that I've written. The most difficult part of writing Solarium was breaking into it. I had absolutely no idea where to start that story or how to start that story or what to do with it or how to approach it and I hated it. The beginning I wrote like so many times and I just hated it and then once I finally got the ball rolling it was actually really really fun. I think the most enjoyable part of this story first was the wordplay. There's some like kind of song-like rhythmic almost rhyming because it's like a stream of consciousness so it was really fun. I've never done something like so stream of consciousness as that story and then I think it was also really fun to write because it's just a really like angry story. Getting to write something just like so angry <laughs> The most challenging part of Wishbone was figuring out the character's goal. I wrote that story pretty quickly and it felt pretty easy, but it took a really long time before I could identify what like the clear through line and goal of the piece was. Also the last scene of Wishbone was like really, really hard to write. Getting that scene to be balanced. The last scene of Wishbone is like kind of expansive, like mentally, like the character is thinking about a lot of things at once. Um, I think the most enjoyable part was actually like a specific scene. The middle scene of that story is a, there's a flashback that I just like really, really enjoyed writing. Um, it's probably like one of my favorite scenes that I've written maybe ever. And then for Cherry and Jane in the Garden of Eden, this is the easiest one to write by far. Um, this story was super easy to write. Probably the most challenging aspect 
was the dialogue. There were just a few sections of dialogue that I was really unhappy with and now I'm happy with them, but at first those were really, really hard. This was a very fun story to write, but I think the most fun aspect was the main character. She's really unhinged and kind of awful, like in a bizarre way. She's really like shifty and selfish and schemy, but also a disaster. So I had a lot of fun writing that character. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the next story, but the next story is called Solarium and it is online in Manola Review, which I have incorrectly been calling the Manola Review for a long time. I wrote this in like January or February of 2019. So the idea for this came when um, my mom got some like free passes to go to the Scandinavian spa in Whistler. If you're from BC, you might know what I'm talking about. And I had a friend in town and so my mom was like, oh, do you guys want to go? And so we went and this spa is not like a regular spa. It's like a bunch of like warm and freezing cold pools on a mountain. You're not allowed to talk, which is weird. And I just thought it was kind of a weird setting. And I thought it would be an interesting setting for a story. And because you're not allowed to talk, I had a lot of time to think. And so I kind of planned out the entire story and every single thing that would happen. And it specifically came to mind because basically everything that happens in the story, like nothing happens in the story. The story has no plot. There's a moment in the story where like the protagonist runs into someone she used to know and like makes eye contact with her. So that had actually happened when I was there. I ran into a supervisor from my old job and it was from a job that I hated and a supervisor that I hadn't really liked because the supervisors at this job were super cliquey and mean to me. And like one of my supervisors has gotten, got like reported to the owner for workplace bullet for bullying me. It was a whole thing. So it was really weird to like run into someone that I knew from this job that I'd worked at like two years ago that I had hated. And then the last image of the story, which I won't spoil what it was, but the protagonist sees something out a window. I had been sitting in the solarium sunroom, which is obviously what the story is named, um, and it was like blue hour and I was looking out the window and it's a really weird setting. There's like a bunch of people wearing bathrobes just like asleep around you, but there's this like beautiful floor to ceiling window and outside it's just like untouched snow and trees. And I just thought like, wouldn't it be cool if that thing that the protagonist sees was right there. I just thought that would be like so beautiful. And then I was like, oh my God, I could build a whole story around this. So I kind of thought through the whole story while I was sitting there. And I basically thought I could take this small series of events by making it really internal and giving the character something that she's working through. It could be a cool story. I wrote this story for a class. I took a class on short fiction for school at the time and it was an awful class and I, didn't like the prof because he was an idiot. <laughs> Let's not get into that. And the word limit was 2000 words. And so this version of the story was not very good because I really had underestimated the amount of words this story needs. I thought it would be like a 1500 word story and it was just not developed. It felt really thin in only 2000 words. Mine was exactly 2000. Like I was at the word limit. Immediately after I handed it in, I went and added a thousand words. <laughs> Then I felt better about it. I had one friend look at it. He gave me some edits. I submitted the story a couple times and got like really curt rejections. Manila Review was having their fiction contest and the judge was Heather O'Neill. Now, normally I don't enter contests because they're a lot of money, but the judge was Heather O'Neill, who's one of my biggest inspirations, influences, favorite authors. Like I love Heather O'Neill so much. I just wanted Heather O'Neill to like maybe know that I exist. And so I was like, I'm gonna submit to this just because the judge is Heather O'Neill. So I submitted and I actually submitted a different story. So a lot of the time when you submit to a contest, you can actually submit again at a discount. So, but let's say the initial fee is $25. You can submit again for $10. Um, so like three days before the contest deadline, literally months later, I was like, wow, I guess I have one more story that's within the word count. So I was like, oh, this is probably just like a waste of money, but like, I guess I'll just throw this in. So I really felt like that story had absolutely no chance whatsoever. And it was the other story that maybe had a shot. Anyways, to my shock, I find out that Solarium is on the short list. And I was like, what is happening? It ended up getting runner up is cool, but it's more cool because it just means that Heather O'Neill read something that I wrote. That was like the highlight of my life. Heather O'Neill knows I'm a person. This issue I actually also ended up getting published with a friend, which is so weird because it's just so unlikely, but it happened twice in a row. Uh, my friend Rachel, who also has a YouTube channel, it's Rachel Writes. I will leave a link to her channel in the description. She deserves so many more subscribers. She's just such a lovely and talented person and her 
videos are so good like the production value is so aesthetic and way better than my own Rachel has been a really good friend of mine for like a couple years the fact that we got ended up in the same issue is so cool to me once again I don't know how this keeps happening that I keep getting published with friends but it is my favorite thing so the first question was what songs did you listen to while writing each story um so for barefoot I actually have yet to find music that like really matches that story but there was one song in particular um the war by simul I would just listen to like chill mixes on YouTube um, because I just hadn't really found anything that really felt like this story feels. Yeah, like the ones on like Bloom. I'll leave the songs in the description. For Solarium, I basically just listened to one album, the album First Body by Two People. In particular, the song Fading was my main one. For Wishbone, I have a whole playlist, but some of the main ones I listened to were You're Somebody Else by Flora Cash, Devil Like Me by Rainbow Kitten Surprise, Not About Running by Tuva Band, and Home by Daughter would probably be the main ones. And then for Cherry and Jane in the Garden of Eden, I just, I just listened to Marika Hackman's album We Slept At Last, which is kind of like my go-to album that I've listened to for like so many stories. Anytime I write a story that's like kind of magical and floral feeling, um, I listen to that. And then the next question was how many rejections did each story get before being accepted? Barefoot got nine. I do know that. It's the most. Solarium got four. Wishbone got, oh god, I don't even know. If I have ever felt confident that a story would get published, it was Wishbone. That story was getting pretty positive feedback from the very beginning. The first time I ever submitted it, was to a contest and the editor did send me like a personalized rejection saying that I had almost made the long list when I had started submitting it, which wasn't that long ago actually. Carve Magazine sent me probably the best rejection I've ever gotten in my life where like they had two full paragraphs of feedback from two different readers. Basically both of them had been like, we really love this story and everything about it. Like it's a no, but we love everything about it. But like we won't be publishing it. So I felt pretty good about that one. As for how many rejections it got, five rejections. Two of them though were on like older versions of the story that I don't think really had a chance because it was before the story was edited that well. Train Train in the Garden of Eden got picked up super fast. Started submitting that for the first time like less than a month before it got accepted. So it had actually only gotten declined two times. So I guess I'll move on to the next story. So the next story is also in print. It's my story, Wishbone, and it's in Prism International. So this issue just came out. So it's their most recent issue, spring 2020, 58.3, I think. I don't even remember, but it's the sprawl issue. So this is actually a themed issue. They do four issues a year and every other issue is a themed issue. The themes are just one word. So this one is sprawl. I actually didn't submit to this issue. I just submitted to their general submissions, but I guess they thought it fit the theme. This is a story about a woman who goes on a bird watching trip with an old friend from college who she hasn't seen in like eight years. They've just fallen out of touch. They, they're going to go to a grouse luck, which is like a, when grouse gather to like do a mating dance. And there's a lot of tea that evolves from there. So I got the idea for this story. I kind of had the beginning inklings of the characters in my mind, but I didn't really know what to do with them. Like I didn't really have a scene for their relationship. One day I met up with my cousin for brunch and my cousin is like super into bird watching. She started talking about how she'd gone to a gross like and like explained what it was. And I immediately, my brain was like, whoa, I could steal that setting, make this way sadder and it would be a really good story. The story was pretty easy to draft and very hard to edit. I wrote the first draft of this in 2018 in like July or something, super quick to draft. And then a friend of mine had given me some edits on it and this was never workshopped. So I got edits from one friend and then applied those edits. And then I just like was never happy with it. And I just kept like tinkering with it over like a whole year's time in like November or something, I got another friend to look at it. She gave me a few more final edits. This story took a long time to get in its place, I think because I went back and forth for a long time on what exactly I wanted the crux of the story to be and what exactly the character arc was pointing towards. But once I figured it out, I was really happy with the story. It's probably one of the stronger pieces I think I've ever written. Um, and it's also definitely the most canlit. I have never written something more canlit than this. Like it's set in Calgary, 
it's about bird watching. So if you want to get a copy of this, you can order them just from Prism. Um, it's a really cool issue. So if you want to read the rest of the issue, I'd highly recommend it. It also like has like these like like beautiful illustrations in it. I haven't read the whole thing yet, but the pieces I've read from it so far, I've really enjoyed all of them. Prism is much more with the times than the fiddlehead. I'm sorry. Um, so you can just order one singular issue from their online store. It's $12 Canadian. However, if you don't want to order an issue, um, or if it's not available where you live, Prism normally does launch events for their themed issues. However, because of COVID-19, they could not do that, so the launch was online. So if you would like to listen to me read this story, I will leave a link to a video of me reading the story. I definitely do not have a future as an audiobook narrator. Last resort, you can listen to me read it. So for a couple more questions, these are some kind of fun ones that someone sent in. Um, you're trapped on a desert island and only have one item from each story. What do you have? Barefoot, what items are even in barefoot? There's the bike. There's a scarf at one point. What else is there other than the bike and the scarf? The math textbook. I guess I'll probably take the scarf, or mm, the math textbook I could burn the pages for fire. Or would it be better to have the scarf because I could use it to like shelter me from the sun? I think I'll take the scarf as a anti-sunburn shade building canopy. Solarium, there's a bathrobe. Wishbone, what is in wishbone? There's a coffee, a camera. Oh wait, there's also a knife. Okay, obviously I'll have the knife. And then Changing the Garden of Eden, what is in that story? A bunch of random stuff in that story. There's some pennies, a light bulb, there's a soy sauce dish. None of it would be helpful on a deserted island. Oh, there's a locket, there's a gold locket. That's probably the most important one in the story. Well, actually, I'll take the soy sauce dish. I feel like having some kind of small bowl would probably be the most useful. I don't remember what's in that story. So the next question I got that's also fun is, all the characters from your recently published short stories get into a fist fight, who wins? Logic would probably say Elijah from Wishbone because he's probably the strongest man, but I'm gonna put my money on Pearl, the main character from Cherry and Jane in the Garden of Eden, because she's a scrappy little demon, and I think she has some tricks up her sleeve. Now we'll move into the last story, which you guys know is Cherry and Jane in the Garden of Eden. So this story is published online. It just came out in the Puritan's spring issue. So I love the Puritan. Honestly, at this point, the Puritan is my actual guardian angel. Um, I was published in the Puritan last year, in last year's spring issue. Um, you guys might have read my story in there. It's called I Will Never Tell You This. So I'm super excited to be in the Puritan again. They're like one of my favorite magazines. Ever since I've been published in them, I've like kept up with all their issues. And I love ever. I always love the stories that they publish. So it was like really, really cool to be published in the Puritan again. So I wrote this story in like September of 2019. I'd had like some of the early images in mind for a long time. This story is about a woman in her like mid twenties named Pearl. Actually not her name. It's the fake name that she gives. And she gets a job house sitting. And when she gets there, the family is the, the family tells her that they've actually decided to stay for the summer, but they do need a nanny if she wants to work as a nanny. And so she says yes, because she has no money. <laughs> tells her that there's just one rule that they're not allowed to go in this garden that's on the property. I had a specific image in mind of the garden and specifically something that's in the garden for a long time, but it didn't really pair with anything. I took a class in my last semester of uni on writing horror and thriller and we watched the um, this Korean horror film called A Tale of Two Sisters. And it's a very mind-boggling movie. I definitely had to Google what happened in it because I did not understand. As I was watching the movie, just the aesthetic of it really got the wheels in my brain churning, and I found myself taking a ton of notes um, for what turned into this story while watching the movie. And in particular was the setting, but the way it's shot, it almost feels like the house is constantly shifting and like disorienting, and every time you see a room from a different angle, it looks like a different room, even though it's technically the same room. It's very intriguing, and this effect really creates this like specific mood to the setting that really inspired me and clicked some things for this story, the easiest process of all of them. I wrote this story in like maybe a couple weeks. It was just a couple settings, I don't really remember. And then I got a friend to look at it. She gave me some edits. And then as soon as those edits were done, I submitted it and then it was accepted like three weeks later. So this one was really like the easiest one to do. You can also listen to me read this story. There is an audio recording that I sent in. So last two questions, I'll answer these to close out the video. Which character from these stories would you most and least want to have as a roommate? I would probably most want to have, I mean, Sunan is a really sweet boy. I really like Sunan, 
but I don't know if I would want him as a roommate just because he's like completely nocturnal. Like he stays up all night talking about physics, um, but he's really interesting. But I think I would probably most want Alana as a roommate. Because of her own self-destructive flaws, she would be a great roommate. She would just want to appease you all the time and would not want to get in your way. It would make my life very easy. She still has some things she has to work through. Who would I least want as a roommate? I mean, it's either Julia, the main character from Solarium, or Pearl. Julia, even though she's a disaster, I don't think she wants to hurt me, whereas Pearl, I'm pretty sure, would steal my stuff, steal my money, and then, like, flee in the night. So, I don't trust her. And then the last question that I got is, how close is each story to the original draft? Which story changed the most? The story that changed the most is definitely Barefoot. That one actually changed structurally. So that story, the beginning and the end I kept, and from workshop feedback, I d basically changed the whole middle. The original draft was like 4,000 words. It's now like almost 6,000. Solarium changed, like I said, basically, I wrote the original draft to a word count of 2,000, added 1,000 words, and then everything after that were just like smaller edits. That one I added a bunch, but after that I didn't change it much. Wishbone kept the same basic structure. Like, Wishbone is just three scenes. That was always the structure, but it kind of just like, each scene expanded and I added more context and I kind of just like redirected the story towards a more clearer end point. And then Cherry and Jane in the Garden of Eden changed the least, I would say that. That story is pretty close to how it was initially. I rewrote some of the dialogue, clarified a couple things, but for the most part, the edits were fairly minor. That's all I've got for this video. And I'll leave everything I talked about linked in the description. I don't know how to close off this video. It was a good time. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can always send me an ask on Tumblr and I'll see you in another video.